Good morning, Phil here from Dirty Drive Away, coming today with you with a workshop video. So I have in front of me a Anovi Reverbery, that's how you say it, um, pump, it's a direct drive pump, uh, made in Italy, uh, seems to be quite common in America, um, but also they're fitted to a lot of the smaller machines. Uh, it's quite a budget pump, they're not that expensive, about 170 quid all in. Um, but today, as the title of the video suggests, we're going to be converting this from a integral unloader. I should get my trusty pointy pick here. So this here is a integral unloader. We're going to be converting this into an external unloader, uh, a flow sensitive one, uh, the K1 from Interpump. Um, so basically what it will do, it will eliminate um, these are, I say they're common. If you use the machine a lot, eventually these are going to fail. Um, and obviously sometimes these parts can be difficult to obtain just because of getting them in and uh, not because they're not available, but it's just obviously the lead times in ordering. Um, whereas if you have like an external unloader, especially something like the K1, they're easily replaceable. The parts are they're, they're so common. You know, they're they're on a lot of professional grade um, washers. Um, the other main advantage to this is obviously these unloaders are what they call trapped pressure. So you will find if you are if you have been using a machine with a very similar type of pump, you know, it could even be an inter pump pump that have got an integral unloader such as this. You will find that they are trapped pressure, which basically means it will it will trap the pressure inside the uh, high pressure hose. So when you let go of the trigger on your gun, um, you will find then it will it will retain the pressure. Um, so if you do have any kind of swivels um, on the end of your trigger, um, they won't work because they're under constant pressure. Um, so here is here's my go-to gun trigger um, and I've got a swivel assembly on this so the whole unit can swivel around when you've got the coupling on. Um, if you're using a trap pressure unloader this swivel will lock up solid and it will vir be virtually unmovable. No point in having one if it's not going to work. Um, so yeah other, other um, positives to this is obviously if you do away with trap pressure you've no longer got um, all of that pressure contained within the hose and the couplings everything like that so you're going to get more longevity out of things like your seals um, and your hose because it's not under constant pressure. So with a, a flow sensitive unloader, basically it will just, um, especially the K1, when you let go of the trigger, all of the pressure from the hose is released. Um, so you, you could, your hose is more flexible, you can manipulate it better. It is basically just more of a pleasure to use. Um, yeah, especially if you're dealing with pumps that are 200, 250 bar, you've got quite a lot of pressure in the system. Um, you know, over time, you know, you'll find that it just becomes a chore when you're using trap pressure. Now I'm used to using flow sensitive. My big machine's got flow sensitive. I have used a trap pressure on there just because that was all I could get at a time. And it just made my life hard. Um, so I had to switch it out for a very expensive flow sensitive unloader. Um, so yeah, so basically today, um, I wanna make this machine flow sensitive um, just because I like the flexibility and the maneuverability in the hose. You know, you can, you, you've got more freedom should we say um, with the flow sensitive unloaders um, obviously this one is also a what they call a circulating um, bypass so basically when the machine goes into bypass a little um, uh, like a little piston inside here lifts up and basically diverts the water background in a loop system so you may have been told you may not have been told but if you are using a recirculating style unloader um, you can only run these machines on idle for about two minutes. When I say idle, I mean off the trigger. Um, so if you've been cleaning, for example, you come off the trigger, customer wants to chat with you, um, or you get, you know, you get waylaid somewhere, you can only let these machines, these pumps run for about two minutes. Otherwise, what's happening is the water circulating round is getting hotter and hotter and hotter until it reaches a stage where either if you've got one, you've got a thermal relief, um, that will kick in, basically pump some water out, or you'll start burning out the seals in your pump because it will get so hot. You don't get that with flow sensitive because the, um, I'll show you, just grab it. So this is a K1. Um, so basically, and let's zoom you out a little bit. No, nope, that's in. There we go. So it's got this is one of my old machines. It's got a pressure gauge on it. You don't have to have all that. Um, so basically, that fits into the 
into the side of the pump and it will when you let go of the trigger the water will divert out of here so you can either divert it to ground you know waste um, you know or if you have got a water tank um, you can basically pump bypass this and return it back to the tank so the water is basically not being wasted. Now this pumps only uh, about 10 litres a minute so I'm not that fussed, you know you let go of the trigger it will just divert it to the ground or you can run a hose pipe off of it and divert it into a drain, you know it's no, it's no bigger deal. So getting into it, so what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to convert these. It's quite an easy straightforward um, procedure, you know you will need your, your K1 or your um, external unloader of choice. Um, you will need um, selection of spanners um, and also you're going to need a, um, a bolt or a, to, to plug up. So you're, I'll show you in a minute but inside here there is a seat that that piston inside seats inside of. So obviously when that lifts up it's got a hole in it. You need to plug the hole that's in the seat on the inside. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, the other thing that you will find this here is a um, chemical or a soap um, injector. So you have a little pipe that goes into a you know soap or traffic film remover or whatever it is you're using. Um, I wouldn't say chemical but you know detergent nozzle. You will find that uh, most detergent nozzles are always going to be after the unloader. I never use this anyway so I'm going to remove it and plug it. It's just a spring and a little ball valve in there um, but you will find that if you do put an external unloader on it as far as I'm aware, these won't work because then you've got the soap going through the unloader and you don't want that because obviously when soap starts to dry, it starts to gunk things up. So you're always going to want your chemical or your soap injector after the unloader. So you'd need to fit a different kind of soap injector if you do use it. Um, but I'm just going to be plugging that up um, with a 1 8 inch BSP plug. So let's get down to it. I'll try and manoeuvre some of the uh, angles to get you better a better shot um, and try and explain more on how this works once we get into it. Um, I'm going to try and get you in a little bit closer, but also in a situation where I can I can get in there and, and get on the tools. So let's let's get you a better angle. All right, there we go. Hope that's a little bit tighter. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, you've got a couple of small components that are inside here. This has got to be the chintziest, cheapest connector that's on here. That's an M22 converter into a 3 8 So the standard connection here is a 3 8 inch BSP. Um, they've just chucked on the cheapest, crappiest thing they could possibly find. Um, it's all furry on the inside. Um, yeah, it's no, no good. <laughs> just bloody awful. Um, so I'm going to start by removing the unloader. Uh, this is going to be a 21 mil. Um, spanner or wrench if you're in America, 21 mil on there, whatever that converts to in inches if you are in the States, um, but we use we use millimetres, so 21 mil. I have been in here before so some of these are going to be quite loose, so just bear in mind that yours will probably be a bit tighter. You've got some o-rings in here which help seal, um, but you basically just get on the, you can get on the bottom and then just, just turn it. So we'll get this off. Nothing really special to this. Inside there's just a spring and a couple of collars uh, and then obviously you can adjust it from the top nut if, um, for your pressure if need be. Um, but this is going to go back in later. We're not, we're not removing this and plugging it. We're going to be putting this back in but we're just going to do a slight modification to it. Um, now I have, um, as far as I'm aware, this is going to be a semi-permanent modification purely because the plug that's in there is very awkward to get out. Um, when it's plugged. Um, so the seat that's in there you can remove. Um, so basically to remove it you're going to need an M6 bolt, fairly long, um, and the, the seat has got a thread in the middle. So you simply just screw this in a couple of turns. It's not a very big seat, so only a couple of turns would be enough. And then you can just simply pop it out and there it is on the end. So that's, that is all it is. So that's, that is the seat that the unloader Let's try and get it to focus. So this is basically the seat and the piston and because that has got a matching chamfered edge, sorry it's not focusing very well, it seats inside there like so. So what we're going to be doing is removing this piece and we're going to be plugging up this piece. So what that basically will do um, is if that unloader did go into bypass um, 
there is the water cannot flow back through we're gonna we're basically gonna be relying on the external unloader to be doing all the work for us um, so hope hopefully anyway by the time we've plugged it the water's not going to circulate anyway um, we can tighten up the spring on the inside to basically make sure that piston is sitting on top of um, the, 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 the bolt we're going to put in here um, and the basically that unloader would no longer function um, it's all going to be done by the external unloader so that's the seat out I'm going to go ahead and remove this as well so we can show you how kind of how it works on the inside um, we're going to remove this horrible chintzy piece off of here um, I think it is just you see the aluminium or some kind of cheap nasty because it's got all furry but it's not very heavy now inside here is going to be a um, like a shutter jet um, not 100% I'm not going to confess that I know exactly how that works but I think it does it picks up the release in pressure when you let off the trigger um, and basically the spring kind of shuts the shuts it off into a seat which then causes the unloader it happens so so fast you know you wouldn't you wouldn't know and um, this will be loctited in with some kind of loctite and hopefully normally only blue um, you may have to apply a little bit of heat to it but just be wary there are some seals um, on the outside of this so don't go making it glow just a little bit of heat should be enough to to break off the the, um, the loctite so that's that look at that for a piece of cheap that's got to be that's just nasty we'll get rid of that right so let's see if i can maneuver you a little bit right one second let's get you down lower okay so that's what the inside of the um or well, the outlet looks like uh, and you can see there is another um like a plug seal and you can see that's a very very small hole the water has to go through shine a bit of light now you might be able to see it better so what we're going to have to do we have to remove that out and that's got a an o-ring in it um, so again you're going to need another uh, bolt to remove it just to pull it out and this one's going to be an m4 i've just got a, a small um, m4 by 30 it's not going to focus come on there we go m4 by 30 mil bolt you just literally again screw it in a couple of turns would be more than enough and then you just wiggle it right there we go so you see it's got a double seal on that you may find that you have to use a slightly shorter bolt which goes in further and pop a couple of screwdrivers on the outside and just lever it out but again this piece is not going back in so you can see I'll get my trusty torch back out inside there is the shutter jet which should just simply pop out with a small pick or if you've got some long nose pliers that'll get in there there's the spring and at the back there you will see the shutter jet let me just grab this out quickly because I'm gonna have to end up with my head in your face so just manipulating it out there's the shutter jet again not going back in because those are contained inside the new unloader so you don't want to be doubling up on them so now it's clear so I'm just going to take you off the tripod to show you inside So that's inside where the unloader went. And if you shine the torch in the end, you can just see the light starting to shine through. 
So that's basically where the water comes in and it would bypass into where the unloader is. So we're going to be blocking it all off. So this half will be effectively blocked off. I don't know if you can see any better up there. Not really. Let's pop you back on the tripod. So what we're we going to do with this. So like I say, this is going to be left open. Uh, the new unloader is going to be basically plumbed into this side. I'm going to plug this. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to seal up the uh, un the old unloader. So again, now I'm going to get you on a different angle, back up where we were. So going back to the uh, the seat, as you can see, it's got a very very small O-ring around the outside, which obviously seals it. And then to plug it up, all I've got is a is a cut down M6 mushroom head bolt. Uh, so when that goes in, we need to screw it in. I'm gonna be using some red Loctite on this because I don't want it coming out. Just gotta be careful that O-ring that's on it. If need be, whilst you're putting the bolt in, just slip the O-ring off. Get an appropriate size Allen key. And you'll see that when this is wound in, it sits nicely. So it's all flush all the way around. And your O-ring will go back on. The bolt can be, you want it to protrude slightly. It doesn't have to be too long. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna pop some red Loctite on this now and get that to set. So I've just put some red Loctite on it and a little smear of um, silicon grease around the O-ring just so we know it's not going to split when we pop it back in. And putting it back in, you can just use, use the Allen key that you've used to tighten up the bolt with. Just pop it back in and then you'll feel it. Just push it down gently and you'll feel it pop into place. That is all there is to it. That is in. That's, that um, Loctite will dry on there. Obviously getting that back out is where the semi-permanent bit comes in because of where it sits in here. Um, I don't think you can get a, a tool in there to get that out. Um, I mean, you may be able to get an Allen key in there and kind of wiggle, wiggle and, and kind of pop it out if, uh, if you did want to revert back in the future. Why you'd want to, don't know. Um, so going back to the unloader itself, so what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to take this piece off the end um, because basically what it is is there's not enough there's not enough movement in this piston to compensate for the, the bolt that we've popped in there. So we're going to take this piece off the end um, and it'll leave you with a little, a little threaded piece on the end there. And this just simply comes apart, it unscrews. Um, it's going to be a bit hard to try and show you this on camera because of the angle, but basically it just unscrews. There's two little caps and a spring in there. The piston's got a, um, a hex head on the end, Allen um, hex head. Just hold it with one, undo this with a spanner, back in two. So that's basically what's on the inside. You see you've got two, two seat collars and a small spring. This is the bottom piece, and you can see that Allen head in there. You can put the Allen key to hold it. There's the cap. Now, it's a funny size on, on the end of here. Uh, it's not 10 mil, but it's not a nine mil. Um, 10 mil is too big, nine mil is too small. So I have to use an adjustable. Um, so just pop your, pop your Allen key in the bottom, and then using an adjustable, you just unscrew it. And it's as simple as, once you've cracked it off, it will unscrew, leaving you with a threaded part. Again, that won't be going back in. And then you just put it back together. So you will need those two collars and the spring back in place with these the flat bit faces down, the chamfer bit goes over the other, the, goes on the spring. 
so it sits like so screw the cap back on and just snug it up using your 21 So that threaded section will just sit on top of that bolt and that will just stop that bolt from coming out. It'll stop it from vibrating. Um, so it will stop the, the seal from moving. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to unscrew this, which will control the pressure, back it off a little bit so I can screw this back in and then snug that up afterwards. It's gonna be a 10 mil nut on the top, the lock nut, and then just an Allen so just loosen it off until you feel that it's, it's backed all the way off. And then you just simply screw that back in. Then using your 21, tighten it down. And then you can just wind this back in to keep that piston snugged up. You'll feel it'll get tighter and tighter as it, as it acts against the spring. You can't really over tighten this because we're not actually moving, we're not actually using it. So typically at this moment in time, my wireless microphone decided it's gonna run out of battery without any warning so I managed to record the rest of these video without any audio, so I'm gonna to have to narrate it. So you're gonna to wanna to simply snug that lock nut up, uh, make sure that that's nice and, nice and tight on there. And then we're gonna be moving on towards the chemical injection side. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't use chemical injection, so I have no real use for this, uh, this takeoff here, so I'm gonna plug it. Sometimes I can get a little bit of water seepage coming out of there. So I'm simply just going to undo it, just uh, crack it off. Inside there is just going to be a little spring and a little ball bearing, like a it acts as a check valve. So take the cap off, very, very small spring in there, and there's a small little ball bearing in the end there as well, um, just acts as a, as a block. So like I said, I'm going to be using a quarter inch BSP brass plug, uh, which I'll be lock tightening or thread locking, using some uh, thread lock, and just screwing that back in. That will seal itself up quite nicely. So off camera, I've just applied some thread lock to it. Just simply screw that back in. It's got a nice flat face on the bottom, so that would uh, seal itself up on the bottom. But the thread lock there will just stop that from vibrating loose. Obviously, these pumps do have quite a bit of vibration. Just snug that right up. Let the thread lock do, do the rest. That will seal all that, all that up, basically blocking that off completely. Give it a little wipe down, make sure it's all nice and clean. Give it a fine and a little snug, just make sure it is nice and tight. So moving on to the unloader itself. So we have the K1 here with a female swivel stainless connection on the end. The swivel basically enables you to be able to manipulate the unloader into any position you want to. Um, rather than obviously spinning around and around and around. Um, you can fit these in, you can then obviously, um, like so, you can then just match the uh, unloader up to it, tighten up the female swivel and you can get that unload into any position you like, which enabling you to move it backwards and forwards, getting into the ideal place um, so that everything clears. You know, you've got your pipe down the bottom, make sure everything clears down there as well. Once you've got into the ideal position, you just simply snug up the uh, female nut on the end there and it will stay, stay in place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fit this uh, swivel female coupling into the main brass manifold of the pump. And to do that, I would use some blue thread lock, uh, and I normally use these. These are called uh, self-centering washers or doty washers. Um, there's, there's various different names for them. Doty is, is one of the more popular ones, and self-centering washers. Um, they simply go over the, the male BSPP threaded part 
there's a small little groove on the outside. So when you do put that into the manifold itself and then tighten it up along with the thread lock, that self-centering washer will make sure that it doesn't leak. So simply put on some, uh, some blue Loctite. Um, I do find that using Loctite or thread lock should we say over PTFE tape just ensures that the vibrations don't break it loose. And there's nothing worse than obviously your connections coming undone. So a, uh, a generous amount of the, uh, your medium strength blue thread locker with your little doty washer on there. Simply screw that all the way in. And then just you can nip that up, making sure that's nice and tight in there. Obviously you don't want any of these coming loose. So obviously get your right size spanner. And these, uh, these fittings can be slightly larger. Um, not 100% sure what, what size it is at the moment. I can't see the spanner, so I'm narrating this now because of my, my microphone. But just snug that up nice and tight. Obviously don't, don't swing the life on it. You don't want to strip the threads out of it. Um, obviously that is a stainless connection on there. You can get these in zinc plated and, and you know, brass, but I like to use stainless because I know it's um, not going to corrode. So once you've done that, you're going to want to be getting your unloader, the main unloader itself. And then you can offer that up to the pump and it will just screw on quite happily. And then you can get that into any position that you need it to be in. So if you've got an outlet and you've got an inlet side, don't get them mixed up. They have to go the right way round. Like I say, you don't necessarily need a pressure gauge on these. I just find it helps. So just that'll be it. You just simply screw that on. They are self-sealing on the inside. You don't need any thread locks or anything on these. And you'll see once you get that into the right position, you can then rotate it depending upon what position you want your outlet in. If you've got a pressure gauge on it, you can rotate it to get the pressure gauge in the right position. Um, I typically like to have them sort of fairly straight down, um, but obviously sometimes you've got other pipes and connections that may get in the way, so hence the reason why you may have to angle it slightly. You can adjust these with the nut on top. You've got um, plus and minus for, to adjusting your pressure. Uh, obviously, again, I find the pressure gauge does help when you come to adjusting the pressure because um, the manual does state you really want it so that it's got a small amount of water bypassing out the bottom even when you are on full trigger, um, which basically means you've got a small a small quantity of water dribbling out of this pipe here. Um, but I do tend to find using the pressure gauge, you can set the pressure that's correct for your machine. Otherwise you can um, technically over-pressurize the system without knowing you can still get that small dribble of water. So obviously if this pump is designed for 200 bar, you know, although yes, you could push it past the 200, it's just not worth it because it will it will have an adverse effect on the longevity of your motor. It could put your motor under stress and strain. Um, so make sure you set these up correctly. They're not the hardest thing to set up, um, so they will come with instructions. Um, but ideally you want it on full throttle, and then when you've got your pressure set, there should be a small dribble coming out. So on the end of there, you can put your connection of choice. Um, I, I use 3 8 inch standard connections because all my other hoses for my big machine, they all run the same connections. So I can interchange my existing hoses and triggers and I can use them all on this same machine. So obviously you can fit on there whatever one you like if you're using M22 cartridges or the, the MIDI 3 8 quick release couplings, you can fit them as well. Um, and then your bypass is a standard half inch. You can leave that open so it diverts the drain or you can put a, a hose coupling on there and have a hose so that you can divert the water off to a drain or grassy area. But you will, when you come off the trigger, um, the water that comes out will dump out the bottom of there. Um, and it can come out with a little bit of force. So if you do put any kind of restricting connections on, so if you did knock it down to say like a half inch, um, like hose lock, you know, garden hose style connection, you will find the water will spray out of there quite viciously. Um, so it may be better off using something large like a three quarter inch hose so that you've got so it, it just tends to just flow rather than you've got high pressure coming out of the bottom so not high pressure but enough that it could potentially make a normal garden hose sort of flap around if it is just lying down on the ground so that basically really is all that there is to um to these conversions it's not a hard conversion this goes for most pumps that have got an integral one loader uh, the K1 is the unloader of choice, and so they're not very expensive. You can, you can pick them up about £75. All of these parts here, they won't be going back in. Uh, they're all the parts that you take out, along with a couple of springs. Um, so you've got your shutter jet, you've got your main internal. Um, the shutter jet sits, sits inside there, inside the main unloader of the old one, but all of those components are now contained inside the K1 unloader, hence the reason why we're not putting them back in. And there's my chemical injection. Uh, you're not supposed to use chemical injection before the unloader, so you would fit it on, on, on 
the outside, so where it is now, you'd see um, you fit the chemical injector after the unloader because you don't want soap and detergents and stuff like that going through going through the unloader part of the system because it can gunk it up and cause it to stop working. So that's it. That's really all there is to it. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it informative and may give you an insight to be able to convert your pump if you have one like this into much more easier flow sensitive. So that's all from me. Happy cleaning. Bye for now.